Hello and welcome to the debate. I'm Marzia Hashimi. Thanks so much for being with us. Diplomatic immunity usually matters in most places in the world. That is, unless you're dealing with the Israelis. Tel Aviv has little regard for diplomats, even from the EU, as Israeli soldiers rough up Europeans who were trying to supply aid to Palestinians in the occupied territories that Israel wants for itself. As Tel Aviv grabs more and more land and even mistreats diplomats, the West closes its eyes to Israeli crimes. What is it? about Tel Aviv that makes most of the Western countries turn a blind eye to their crimes and acts against international law. We'll try to take a look at these questions and others on this next debate. Stay tuned. <laughs> Israeli troops clash with a group of Bedouins whose homes were demolished by the Israeli army. A man gasping with pain as he lies on the dirt. Earlier, the Israeli army roughed up a group of European diplomats who had come to help out the displaced Bedouins in the Jordan Valley village. Minutes later, a European diplomat is forced by Israeli troops to roll in dirt. Israeli forces yanked French diplomat Marianne fesneau casson out of the aid truck and, and confiscated the vehicle. She felt a pinch of the humiliation that Palestinians go through every day at the hands of the Israeli soldiers. The Israeli forces' manhandling of the European diplomat triggered her harsh reaction. They dragged me out of the truck and forced me to the ground with no regard for my diplomatic immunity. This is how international law is being respected here. The Israeli forces prevented the diplomats from carrying out their mission, which later triggered Palestinians' anger. The United Nations says 10 families, including 16 children, were displaced after the Israeli army bulldozed their homes. They came to us farmers with their bulldozers and they demolished everything and scattered us all, even four and five year old little children. No human being could act like this. They destroyed everything and left nothing at all. Israel says the area is a closed military zone, but the Bedouins say they are the owners of the land and not Israel. These are lands owned by people and they have certificates. They have been on this land for dozens of years. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs says Israel has destroyed more than 500 Palestinian houses in the West Bank and mostly in the East Jerusalem Al-Quds since the start of 2013. More than 860 people have been left homeless as a result. Add to that Israel's non-stop settlement building in defiance of the international community and in violation of international law. Under the UN Security Council Resolution 446, Israeli settlements in the occupied Palestinian territories are illegal. Tel Aviv's lack of respect for international calls for a halt to the settlement construction triggered the European Union to impose a ban in July on giving aid to Israeli organizations in the occupied Palestinian lands. The ban will take effect next year, but the U.S. is standing in the middle. Washington has urged the EU to postpone it. Elsewhere in Vienna, Western governments rushed against to help Israel to censure Tel Aviv for its refusal to acknowledge possession of nuclear weapons. 54 Western governments voted against to kill the resolution at the International Atomic Energy Agency. Diplomats say the resolution was voted down due to a strong US-led lobbying on behalf of Israel. The regime is believed to have the largest arsenal of WMDs in the Middle East, but it has never acknowledged them nor accepted international monitoring. In 2008, former U.S. President Jimmy Carter confirmed that Israel had at least 150 nuclear warheads, while it's widely believed that the arsenal is much bigger than that. I'd like to welcome guests to the program, former U.S. Marine Mr. Ken O'Keefe out of London and journalist and commentator out of New York, Ms. Maxine Dover. Thank you both for being with us. Uh, let's start it off in New York with Ms. Dover. How is it that time after time Israel goes against international law, even not respecting diplomatic immunity and, and even roughing up these diplomats, but nothing is done about it, nor is there even a formal complaint uh, from these Western capitals? 
I think first we must uh, recognize that this is territory under the jurisdiction of Israel and the very recent decision of the Supreme Court uh, designated the area as a military zone, a non-resident zone. Uh, that was a procedure that took several years and was uh, carried through the courts in a very ordinary legal procedure. Uh, the fact that the, the uh, diplomats uh, claim that they were roughed up, uh, and it's only a claim, we, we have nothing more than the, the words of this uh, one French uh, diplomat. Uh, the fact is that they are diplomats, they are not humanitarian aid workers, and they should not have been there in the first place. Their position was not to act uh, uh, very similar to the, the way the flotilla um, participants acted, and that, that was not within the bounds of uh, international law. All right, well, what about that, Mr. Ken O'Keefe, basically uh, what Ms. Dover is saying, that one, because the Israeli Supreme Court has made a decision to claim that it's a military drone, though international law specifies otherwise, then uh, that makes it uh, okay, basically, for Tel Aviv to do whatever it wants. Well, the, the first thing we have to realize, and, and you alluded to it in the introduction, is, is how is it possible that Israel can continue to get away with flouting international law, even to the most obscene levels of using things like white phosphorus on civilian populations, chemical weapons on civilian populations. In order to understand how Israel can get away with these things, we have to understand what is power in this world. And if you want to understand power, then you need to know who controls the financial system, who controls the issuance of money. The bankers run the world quite famously. This is very well understood by those of us who understand the nature of power. And those who run the world have Israel as their favorite little plaything. They also happen to own the bankers who run the, the financial system. They also happen to have bought off and paid for every prostitute who can be bought off in the governments of the world, in the mainstream media, and virtually every aspect of human society. So this is how Israel can get away with this. This is how Israel at the IAEA meeting this, uh, this last Friday can get away with another pass and not have their nuclear plant uh, inspected, to not have their nuclear arsenal inspected, to not have their chemical weapons arsenal inspected because they enjoy the favor of the entire world, uh, the prostitutes who are bought and paid for by those who run the financial system. So until we change that financial system, Israel will continue to enjoy the benefits of being able to run roughshod over the world and get away with literally bloody murder. What about that, Ms. Dover? Is there one law, it seemed, for the Israelis and another uh, for the rest of the world? Absolutely not. The, what I'm hearing uh, reeks of the, the kind of propaganda that, uh, that was uh, a classic anti-Zionist, anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic, not anti-Zionist, but anti-Semitic propaganda from earliest times. Uh, this was the, the sort of Nazi, the Jews run the world kind of uh, configuration that uh, was so well proven not to be true. Uh, well, you're saying uh, that you're talking about anti uh, being anti-Semitic, which we're looking at the facts on the ground, Mr. Dover. We're, we're looking at, for example, excuse me, in the, Vienna the right now, we're talking about, I'm talking, please. We're talking about in Vienna with the IAEA meeting uh, that the Arab countries, for example, they draft this law um, to make sure that Israel, like other countries or entities, would also be obliged to report their WMDs to go under the Non-Proliferation Act. What would be wrong with that, Ms. Dover? What makes that anti-Semitic? That is not what uh, my comment was, was directed at. My comment was the, directed at this business of the bankers and the prostitution of the bankers. And the, okay, so then what, well, okay, uh, then gets the back to the question. Then what would be the problem? Have, have Israel as their plaything, I think, the... Uh, the, the statement was. Okay, so what would, what would be, be the, the problem, problem with, with the IAEA uh, resolution uh, that Israel would abide by the rules as others? What would be the problem with that? I cannot speak to that as a problem. I am not uh, in, in position to okay. understand the, the atomic diplomacy well enough. What do you think, Ken O'Keefe? What is the problem? Why is there this duplicity? I know you referred to or alluded to, alluded to the whole financial system. Does that also, do you think that that's the bulk of the problem also with the IAEA? Well, what is also the problem, and I know this as an American-born son, um, an American-born son who volunteered 
to kill or be killed in the U.S. Marine Corps, that the people of Israel, just like my American brothers and sisters, are infected with the ideology of exceptionalism. I call exceptionalism actually, more accurately, supremacism. The idea is that we are somehow better than everyone else. And it is this infected ideology of supremacism which has allowed the United States and its citizens effectively to sit by while we have committed one atrocity after another. If we go back to World War II, the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the firebombing of Tokyo, Dresden, the firebombing of Dresden was particularly hideous. We can go on to the Korean War and Vietnam War. In the Vietnam War, we dropped more bombs than all of World War II combined. 20 million bomb craters created there. We killed probably two to four million uh, Vietnamese or Asians, Cambodians and Laotians as well. We have committed one crime after another. We have supported dictators like Suharto, Pinochet. We've, uh, we've kidnapped many people around the world who have stood for diplomacy and democracy. We have a long list of crimes over and over again. And the only way that that was possible is because we subscribe to an ideology of supremacism. Israel is a nation state based with citizens who are infected with a supremacist ideology that makes them believe that they are, quote, chosen. And as chosen people, everyone else who is not chosen is effectively subhuman. The Palestinians have borne the brunt of this ideology for many decades now and know exactly what it's like to be treated like subhumans, to be treated like dogs. In fact, dogs are even treated better than the Palestinians are. So what this French diplomat experienced in the last couple of days is exactly that, just a taste, a small taste, of what it's like to be a Palestinian in an occupied land with a rabid dog racist state where even Netanyahu himself has referred to the Jewish people as a race. It is a racist state based on racist supremacist ideology and the treatment of the Palestinians and everyone else who comes to the aid of the Palestinians is indicative of this racist supremacist ideology. All right, well, let me just take a quick break and uh, let's uh, get in some of our Facebook viewers, uh, their comments. Let's take a look at uh, comment number one. My personal opinion as a private citizen is that our EU leaders must demand that Israel stop making nuclear weapons and hand over the results of war as now. How dare they demand of other nations in the region what they don't respect themselves? What about that, Maxime Dover? What would be wrong in general? You said you don't understand the complications of the IAEA, but in general, as a policy, what would be wrong with uh, uh, any entity, basically, uh, to be demanded to stop making nuclear weapons and at least to have them accounted for? Your, your take on that question. I will not say that that is wrong. Um, there, there is a responsibility of every nation to uh, abide by laws given to every nation and with the um, expectation that all nations would in fact abide by the laws, that it's, it's a circle. Yes, nations should be abiding by the laws and uh, should there be differentiation? I don't think so. Uh, however, the, the, uh, the concept that my colleague in London has promoted of, of the chosen people as a concept of racism is absolutely not. It is absolutely wrong. You know, there are those who say chosen for what and, and chosen to be a light unto the nations, chosen for additional responsibility. Uh, this concept of the chosen comes from the acceptance of the laws of the Torah. Uh, the original acceptance, that is the reason for the choice. Um, there were no other nations, according to historic myth, that were willing to take on such laws. And those laws have become the base of Judeo-Christian um, uh, Abrahamic faiths, all three of them, and all abide by those laws to condemn um, racism as a method of operation is absolutely untrue. Um, I do, do not see, if, if one goes to Israel and one looks at the dichotomy of the people who are Israelis, uh, certainly they are not of one race as my colleague in London would seem to, uh, to uh, indicate. There are whites, there are blacks, there are browns, there are Arab-based Jews, there are Jews from Ethiopia, Jews from Europe, Jews from America. Uh, okay. These are not, they're Jews from Asia. 
These are not, this is not one race. This is a, a, a people who have chosen to be together by their common philosophy. Uh, what about that, Ken O'Keefe, people chosen to be together by common philosophy? Um, your take, because it seems that those people, though, are on occupied lands and, and trying to confiscate more and more of Palestinian lands. Your take, Ken O'Keefe. Oh, well, it's, it's beyond laughable, really. A Jewish person cannot marry a non-Jew in the state of Israel because it is a racist state. It is the Jewish state. A Palestinian who can prove his background and even has deed titles to land in Palestine cannot return to Palestine. Yet a Jew anywhere in the world who can trace their Jewish hereditary uh, path can return to the state of Israel. This is a racist policy. Not only that, but the laws for the Israeli citizens and the few Arab citizens of Israel uh, is totally different from that of the non-Israeli citizens who are occupied in the West Bank. And of course, we know about the treatment of the people of Gaza, whereby 1.7 million people, which includes over 800,000 children, probably about 850, 900,000 children, over half of the population of Gaza is children, and yet they can be collectively punished, supposedly based on the crimes of their parents or others. And this is exactly how the Jewish state of Israel acts. It acts in a Jewish supremacist way. The policies of those in the top positions of power is that synonymous with a racist supremacist ideology. The only reason why they can get away with this, once again, I will repeat it, regardless of what this person says on the East Coast, is that they enjoy the favor of those who have the power in this world. The reason why the bankers got trillions of dollars and pounds and euros for us to bail them out, the richest of the rich bankers managed to get our treasonous governments to have the American taxpayer, European taxpayers, and all of the other taxpayers of the world to bail them out is because the bankers own the governments. They also own the mainstream media. The fact that they happen to be largely Jewish is not my opinion, it's just a simple fact. The fact that Netanyahu refers to the Jewish people as a race, countless rabbis refer to the Jewish people of a race, and the fact that the Jewish state itself requires that you prove your Jewish hereditary roots in order to come back to Israel is not my Jewish supremacist ideology. That is the ideology of the people themselves and the government themselves. So it is a racist state, and it treats people as subhumans, and this is just simple facts. Whatever is said doesn't change the hard, cold facts on the ground. And okay. until this Jewish supremacist ideology is dealt with on a head-on level, and the lawlessness of this state is dealt with on a head-on head -on level, none of this is going to change. Well, what about that, Maxine Dover? Does it not seem to you that time well, and time I will, again... I will uh, use ahead. the word relig... Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, you can comment. I, I will uh, agree that there is a Jewish... Um, ideology. I would not call it racist. I will call it religious. Uh, certainly there is a, a common religious thread and I think that is where the commonality uh, uh, is, is centered. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example. I met a couple who made Aliyah who uh, chose to be Jewish. They were both originally Christian by, uh, by birth and they both converted in the United States and both made Aliyah. And oh, by the way, they are black Americans in their origin. Okay, uh, this, is, this is not, no let me just get us back on track because this is, not, this is not a discussion so about as Judaism. Far as racist, no, which no, is, the track is that this Ms. is Dover, not a racist Ms. society. Dover, this is not a discussion this about Judaism, not which a racist of course society. is a respected religion. If we want to get into the technicalities of Zionism and the Israeli Zionist state, then I think that's a different argument. But looking at this situation, what I want to concentrate on is internationally. Why do you think that there is a different reaction to whatever Israel does? Does, then, then what other uh, entities may do? We see, for example, we saw in, in the well, attacks. Excuse me, let me I finish my question. That that is we correct. saw the situation in Gaza of that course. they used uh, illegal phosphorus bombs and nothing was done to them. And now we see in many situations, for example, like right now, we see in, is in, in Syria. Uh, the international pressure that has been put for an alleged use of chemical weapons by Damascus, which has not been proven. Yet there was nothing, there was no pressure at all put on Tel Aviv. Do you not think that there is a difference uh, in how the international community, especially the Western part of the international community, views Israel? 
Well, I think that you are forgetting the UN report that condemned Israel and that had to be dealt with and had to be. Uh, but what uh, happened to Tel Aviv? To and and uh, that there were. What happened? Uh, define your question. It means you what said that there was, was, a, there was, was a UN uh, report condemning, but there was nothing, there, look, no there, price that they had uh, to pay, you, was there? I am sure are aware, I am sure that you are aware that there are actions taken against Israel by European states. Uh, it is uh, known in, as the initials BDS, uh, and this is uh, something that Israel needs to um, combat and, and make sure that its scholars, for example, its academics, are not eliminated from universities, that it's manufactured goods from uh, areas that are designated as, as uh, outside of the green line are not uh, unaccepted by uh, countries around the world. Uh, these are jobs that Israel has to work on. Okay. And, and to, for you to say that Israel is not being punished is totally incorrect. All right, Ken O'Keefe, what about that, my and statement the, that I said the, the basically going going back, going there, back there is a different to, law towards Israel. Ken O'Keefe, one minute, please. Well, the reality is obvious. There is impunity when it comes to Israeli actions. And I would also make clear that the United States and Britain enjoy a similar impunity. Why is Tony Blair and George Bush not rotting away in a prison at The Hague for what they've done to the Iraqi people? One to two million dead, and yet no one has been prosecuted on any meaningful level at all. Israel enjoys the same thing, and that's because they both, all of these entities, have the favor of the banksters, the ones who run the world through the financial system. And until we change that, we will not change this. But going back to what she said, at the end of the day, listen, I am, I am a human being, and I consider every person on this planet to be a brother and sister, and I want what's best for everybody. And for us to understand the truth and move forward with an understanding of the truth is what's necessary to create a better world. And the truth is that this current system cannot continue. So what we've seen by, the, by what's happened in Syria is very promising. The powers that be wanted a war on Syria, but because people did not consent and give the facade of consent, there is no war on Syria. That shows who has the real power. We, right. the and people, have uh, the real power. Okay, on that note, we're just we're out of time. I appreciate you both being with us. Uh, out of London, Mr. Ken O'Keefe, former U.S. Marine, and out of New York, uh, journalist and commentator, Ms. Maxine Dover. Thank you, viewers, for being with us. Make sure you join us right here, same time, same place, tomorrow in another debate. I'm Marcia Hashimi, signing out for myself and all the crew right here in Tehran. Thanks so much, and goodbye.